Hi, this is Angela Galloway, and I am going to be working on Chapter 16, which is Unit 1 for Math 146. Now, this chapter generally in my lecture class I actually cover for several days, so I may do several videos um, for this Chapter 16 so that you don't have just one really long video that you have to listen to. So this one will try to cover 16.1. And what's in 16.1 is all the different voting methods that we're going to cover. So chapter 16 is kind of a, a interesting chapter, I guess I'll say. Um, it's probably some topics that you've never covered before. I know when I started teaching this class, um, these were some topics that I'd actually never seen, I don't think, in any of my um, undergrad or graduate classes. So. They are some interesting topics, though. The nice thing is they're really not too complex mathematically. It's more just understanding the different methods um, and seeing how you would, would go through them to get the winner for whatever voting method you're doing. So the first one we're going to cover in 16.1 is the plurality method. The plurality method is the one you're most familiar with. Okay, That's generally how we vote for things when you say, um, you know, who are you going to vote for, Clinton or Trump? You know, you only vote for one, right? You don't say this is my first, this is my second, this is my third choice, whatever. You just vote for your top choice. So the plurality method, the reason why it's called that is a uh, plurality actually means most. So you can see that here uh, that I've got that written out. So plurality means you got the most votes in this case. So each voter gives one vote to his or her top ranked candidate. The candidate with the most votes or a plurality of the votes wins the election. Okay, this method is the most common voting method. The winner does not have to have the majority of the votes. Okay, so uh, for majority what we're talking about is uh, it's something a little different here. Well, I thought I was going to change my color, but I don't think that really worked. Here we go. Let's see. Nope, still yellow. That's okay. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, with the majority of the votes, majority means more than half, right? So someone can win an election just by getting one more vote than someone else. If they had to have the majority, that means that they got more than half, right? They got more votes than everybody else combined, basically. Uh, so we will talk about the difference in plurality and majority as we uh, go through uh, this chapter, but that's just something to remember. Plurality just means the most majority means that you have more than half okay now this works best when you only have two candidates running for the election and the, then this says why there's a little YouTube video if you'd like to watch that that kind of just goes through how the third or fourth uh, candidate parties can uh, cause some trouble in the election and normally we just stick with those um, two parties and it kind of talks about why uh, that would be. So that's something you can watch that's just uh, another thing I add just kind of as interest for my students and so you can kind of see how this applies in real life. So down here I gave a little example of how to find majority, like if you had 20 people voting, what would the majority what would you need to have the majority of the votes? So you would divide that number by two, that gives you 10, and then you add one to get to 11, okay? Because if you had 10 votes, somebody else could have 10 votes also, right? Uh, so you still wanna have more than everybody else. So you've gotta have more than half, so you get to 11 there. Okay, let me get to this. Okay, so here's our quick example here. Let's say you're planning to have a group of friends over for a Super Bowl party. You decide to let them vote on the main dish and here are the results. So you give them four options here and then you had them all vote. Okay, so they each vote for their top choice. So which would we choose if you were using the plurality method? So who's going to win here? Well, we see that, of course, pizza has five votes, right? So they would have the plurality of votes. So they are the winner. But you might notice that, yeah, pizza does have five votes, but a lot of people voted for something else, right? So it looks like five people are going to be happy with pizza, but I wonder if these other people will, right? So since the vote was so close, maybe you decide to say, all right, don't just give me your first choice. 
rank all your choices that I'm going to give you. Okay, so put them in first, second, third, and fourth place in this case. So um, if you want pizza first, what's the next thing that you would be happy with if we didn't have pizza, etc. So that's what we're going to see down here. Now this um, thing here is something that you're going to see a lot when you work through this homework. If you've already started on it, you've probably seen a lot of these uh, rankings set up. So we've got over here are the number of votes and over here are the rankings that go along with it. So um, what you're looking at is this here uh, would be your first place vote and then this is going to be your second and this would be your third choice and this would be your fourth choice. Okay, uh, so everybody had to completely rank all the options, all right? So you see that three people here chose pizza, then hamburgers as their second choice, hot dog as their third choice, and barbecue as their fourth choice. Normally when we do these rankings, you'll see that we'll use some sort of abbreviation for the words, and that's uh, mainly just to make it a little easier to read, because if I had to write out all these words here, um, you know, my rankings would get pretty long. So usually you're gonna see some sort of abbreviation. So you can see this P is gonna stand for pizza, H is for hamburger, HD is for hot dogs, and of course barbecue is there, okay? So here we've got two people voted for this ranking, four for that one, three for this one, two for that one, okay? So everybody just ranked um, how they felt about the different options. Then you would look at all the rankings and combine them. So there just happened to be two people that put barbecue, then hamburger, then hot dog, then pizza, okay? All right, so looking at these results, do you think most of your guests would be happy with pizza as the main dish? Well, we definitely see that, you know, here we've got these people, so five people here that um, ranked it as number one, so they'll be happy. But notice that everyone else ranked it last, right? So we've got five people that have pizza in first place, nine people that have pizza as their last choice. So then you might wonder, well, people may not be that happy with pizza. I'm going to make a few people happy, but not everybody, right? So this kind of brings up something that shows us that maybe the plurality method isn't always going to be our best option to use, right? So what other methods could we use uh, to figure out who the winner or who the best choice would be in this case for our Super Bowl party, okay? So the next one we're going to talk about, the next method that we're going to discuss is the pairwise comparison method, okay? So besides the plurality method, um, after you we get through the plurality method, all the other methods really require that you rank all of your options, okay? So we're no longer just going to choose our top choice. We're actually going to put each of the options um, into some ranking, okay? So the pairwise comparison method, what we're going to be doing is comparing different pairs, okay? That's where the, the name's coming from. So we're going to take each of the options two at a time, because a pair, of course, is two things, right? So we're going to take each option two at a time and see which one is preferred. So basically kind of do like a head-to-head -head battle of each option and see which one got the most votes if we were only looking at those two options, all right? So first you have to have everybody rank their options, okay? Um, we're going to compare each pair to each other. The one who gets the most votes is awarded one point. These are called our pairwise comparison points up here, the one point. If the two candidates have an equal number of votes, they each receive half a point. Now that is a rule here uh, that, you know, I always tell the class. However, I don't think I've really ever seen it happen on any of our homework problems that we've done. Now, it's possible you might run into one, especially if you're working in the study plan or something like that. Um, but so far, I have not ever noticed that happen. But it may just be a, oh, by the way, if this was to ever happen, there is something we can do about that. So they would each get half a point. But after we compare all the pairs, the pair, uh, I'm sorry, after we compare all the pairs, the option who got the most points is going to win, okay? Now with all of these methods, when I first introduce them, 
it's just a bunch of words and you know we're going to do this and then you do this and it doesn't make as much sense until we actually do an example so don't worry too much if it's a little confusing when you're reading through that uh, it's going to make a little more sense once we actually look at doing an example so let me erase all this here okay because we don't know yet uh, of course, I did this in class, but we will come back to this. OK, so we haven't done any of this yet. So back to example one, these were the rankings that we had. OK, so I haven't changed anything. I just brought these back over to here. OK, now we're doing pairwise comparison, right? So I want to compare all the pairs. So I've got four options here, right? So how many pairs do I have? Well, I can compare pizza with hamburger, pizza with hot dog, pizza with barbecue, then hamburger with hot dog, hamburger with barbecue, hot dog and barbecue, and that would be all my pairs, okay? So I've done pizza and hamburger, so I don't need to do hamburger and pizza because I've already compared those two, right? So you only have to do a pair once. So if I compare P to H, I don't have to compare H to P because I've already done that, right? So I'm going to have six pairs here, but I listed all these out, right? What if, you know, it's your first time and you're doing this, what if you're not sure if you've listed all the pairs that you need to, you know, once you're done listing, how do I know that this is really all the pairs that I need to compare in this case? So that's what we're looking for here. How do I know how many pairs I'll have? And then I'll, also, I might want to know how many rankings there will be, like, so how many possible rankings I could have here. That might be important to know uh, if you're just giving a certain number of options, like to your employees or your friends or whatever and you just want to know before you get all the information back how many possible rankings am I going to be dealing with okay so let's go to the next slide this is going to be just kind of like a side note slide on how we would um, do some of this in the background okay before we actually get to doing the pairwise comparison method okay all right so for calculating the total possible number of rankings so you want to know how many possible rankings you know doing first second third and fourth uh, how many possibilities are there of that so in our example we're asked to choose from four menu items right and rank them from the top choice to the last choice okay so if this is for your first choice so you're for the first choice, you've got those four options to choose from, right? Pizza, hamburger, hot dog, and barbecue. So how many options do we have for first place? We have four, right? Uh, because we have four options. So we have all four options to choose from for that first place. So I choose one for first place. Now when I'm putting my second place, how many options do I have? Well, now I only have three, right? Because one of them has already been in first place, and now I only have three to choose from for second place. And then for third place, I have two, right? Because now one is in first, one's in second. I only have two left to put into third place. And then for my last place, I only have one left, right? So you kind of see this pattern happening, right? When I multiply this out, I get 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24, right? So you might wonder, hmm, is that always going to happen that way? Is it always going to start with the number of options and then keep going down until we get to 1? Yes, that's always going to happen, okay? So however many options you have, we'll call that A, A options. You start with A, then you multiply times A minus 1, times A minus 2, times A minus 3, all the way down until you get to 1. So if you have like 30 options, you do 30 times 29, times 28, times 27, you know, all the way till you get down to 1. Now, like I said, if you've got 30, okay, if you have 30 options, who wants to type that into their calculator, right? 30 times 29 times 28 times 27, that would take a long time, right? So we have a special thing we can use called a factorial, okay? You may have seen this exclamation mark used before in math, um, or you may never have seen it used in math, but we use that exclamation mark for a factorial, okay? And how the factorial is defined is this. The factorial does this problem right here. It does A times A minus 1 times A minus 2 all the way down to 1, okay? So let's bring up our calculator. If you have a graphing calculator, 
I've got one here that we can use. So where is that factorial button at? Well, our factorial button is actually in the math area. So you'll see this button here, math, and go over to PRB, which is probability, okay? Go down to number four, and that is our factorial, okay? So I'm gonna quit that so I can go back to this screen. Um, so to work out this problem here, I could do four times three times two times one, right? I get 24. Or I can do four, then go to math, go to PRB, and down. you can arrow down to four, or you can just push four. Um, either way works on these. Um, but So you go down there, push enter. So now it's put it there, four factorial, enter is 24, okay? Um, so that is the quick way to do something when you're trying to multiply that number and every number below it. Okay, that's the factorial. So we use this to find the total possible number of rankings. So if you have a problem that says you have six options, how many possible rankings are there? You're going to do six factorial, right? So go to six math uh, factorial and you get 720 possible rankings. So the more options you have, that's the more possible rankings you might get back. So if you're asking, you know, 200 people to rank six options, it's possible you could get, you know, all 200 people having different rankings. Now, that probably won't happen, but it is possible that you're gonna end up with a lot of different rankings. Whereas with four options, the most, uh, the most rankings you'll get back is 24. So that's going to be a little easier to work with. So I know some of your homework problems just ask you about the number of rankings. So that's how you would do that. If you have a smaller scientific calculator, there should be a uh, PRB key on there. And when you push the PRB, you should see that factorial button there somewhere. Okay, um, so look for that. I don't have it uh, where it can show up on the computer, but there should be a button like that that says PRB uh, that you should be able to click. All right, so that's how we do rankings. So with rankings, you want to think about using the factorial. If I'm looking for calculating the total number of pairs, okay, so like in our example, we had four options, and we saw that here, I just listed them all out, right? But like I said, what if you weren't sure you had gotten all of them correct? Like what if I list six and then I'm like, well, is there a seventh or an eighth? You know, I want to make sure that I have all of them listed, right? So to find how many pairs we have, we're going to use something called combinations, okay? And it's represented by this NCR here. So combinations tell you the number of combinations of N things taken R at a time, all right? So what that means is we are going to look at four things, four items, and we're looking at them two at a time, right? Because we're going to create pairs. So for our examples, we're always going to use R equal to 2, okay? We're always going to be choosing 2 at a time because we're always making pairs. Now, when you do combinations, just in general, usually we see them used in statistics um, when we talk about probability and some other things. But when we see combinations, R is not always equal to 2, okay, outside of this example. But... For us, since we're always looking at pairs, okay, because we're wanting to know the total number of pairs, we are always going to have R equal to 2, okay? So this number there will always be 2. So we're going to take four things two at a time to create pairs. Now, how do we get to this NCR? Well, if you have an example on your homework and you're looking for the number of pairs, it's going to come up with a formula that you should do. It's going to be something like N factorial divided by R factorial times N minus R factorial, something like that. Okay. Now you can do that. You can calculate that out and I just showed you where the factorial button is so you could do that. However, really the easier way is just to go ahead and use this button in your calculator. What this button is going to do, it's going to do that factorial formula for you. Okay, so the formula that you see given to you in the Help Me Solve This, or you might see as you're reading through the book, is going to be what your calculator can do for you when you're just using um, this uh, 
NCR key here. Okay, so you may have seen that when we went and did the factorial. So go back to math here, go over to PRB again, and notice that down here we've got this NCR key right here. Okay, so how are we going to use this? Well, we're going to type in our number four first because that's how many options we have to choose from. Okay, then we're going to go back to math, go down to NCR. And then we want to choose two at a time, okay, because we're making pairs. So it tells us that there's six possible pairs, okay, that we can put together. Now we could go back to our list that we created and we saw that we did uh, put six pairs together. So that means we have included all the pairs that we have. All right, so what if I had 10 options and I want to know how many pairs I have to make? Let's see what that would come out to. So if I do 10, I've got 10 options. I'm going to go to math, PRB, and the NCR here. And I'm choosing them two at a time. And I've got 45. So I'm going to have to compare 45 different pairs, which is probably going to take me a long time. So most of these problems, um, when we're doing pairwise comparison, don't have a whole lot of options um, because we don't want you to have to, you know, compare a whole lot of pairs in these. So I try to make sure our homework problems don't have um, a lot of pairs because, you know, I don't want you to have to deal with doing that when you go through this method. Now, if you have the smaller scientific calculator, it should also do this. The PRB button, um, you should be able to push that on your scientific calculator. The same place you found the factorial, there should be the NCR key there as well. Okay. If you have any problems finding it on your calculator, uh, just let me know. And, uh, you know, you can even send me a picture of what your calculator looks like or something like that. And I can try to figure out... Um, where it would be. If you're local, if you're in Bowling Green, you can always come by and see me during my office hours. Or we do have the Learning Center here um, on our main campus, and they offer free math tutoring um, all day, every day. And you can uh, schedule an appointment there or drop by and see them. They are in uh, Building C, right before you get to the library. Uh, the Learning Center is here, and they can do calculator tutorial stuff as well. Okay, but let me know if you have any questions on that. Okay, so that's how we would find number of pairs. So for number of pairs, we're doing combinations. For number of rankings, we're doing factorials. And so some of your homework problems are just using this page right here, not actually getting into the, the method, um, just looking at uh, doing the factorials uh, or the combinations. All right, so we still haven't answered this question, right? We're still trying to figure out how to do the pairwise comparison method. So before we do that, you know, we found the number of pairs, the number of rankings kind of as a side note. But let's get to actually doing the pairwise comparison ranking. Well, actually, I'm sorry. Before we get to the pairwise comparison, I had a few more examples here of just doing um, – finding the number of pairs, finding the number of rankings, okay? And I think you all can probably do that now, but if you have any questions on those, just let me know. So this is, let me erase this real quick so we can work this out ourselves. This is um, what we're going to be doing for the pairwise comparison. Now, I have it all written out nicely here. Um, because, I, you know, I'm just showing the class how to do it the first time, okay? So it's nice and neat, and I've got all these big charts here. Now, when you do this by hand, you probably won't be, you know, writing, rewriting the rankings every time and all that, okay? Um, you can do it however you want. This was just to make it easy for my whole class to kind of see um, how we were going to do it, okay? So this here, okay, this is the same for every one, right? You can see those are all the same. These are just the rankings and the votes that we got for this problem. So this is what you would be given um, in the problem, right? You're given this at the beginning. So I rewrote this for each one, and then I put each pair here. So see, this pair compares pizza and hamburger. This pair is pizza and hot dog. This is pizza and barbecue, right? So we listed out those six pairs. So we've got these six pairs here. So now what I'm going to do is when I'm comparing pizza and hamburger, I'm only concerned with pizza and hamburger over here, okay? So 
if pizza was ranked before hamburger, then pizza gets all the points or all the votes in that case. If hamburger was listed before pizza, then hamburger gets all the points, okay? So let's look at, um, here we've got pizza versus hamburger. So pizza is ahead of hamburger, right? So pizza is gonna get all three of those votes. Here, pizza is ahead of hamburger. So pizza gets all those votes. Here, hamburger is ahead of pizza. So all four of those votes go to hamburger. The same thing here and here. So you'll notice hamburgers ahead of pizza there. Sorry, just a second. <laughs> um, is there, right? So we add three plus two is five. Hamburger is four plus three plus two is nine. So who got the most votes when we compared here? Well, hamburger, right? So hamburger got nine and pizza only got five. So in this pair comparison, hamburger won. So they technically would get what we call one pairwise comparison point, okay? Because they won this pair. Okay, so you see that that's basically what we're going to do. Okay, we're trying to get these pairwise points. So we're seeing who is going to win each pair. So here I can pair pizza to hot dog. Here pizza gets these two, hot dog gets the rest. So again, hot dog wins here, so they would get one point. Okay, um, here barbecue wins, so they get one point. Now over here, now we're comparing hamburger to hot dog. So looking here, hamburger is ranked before hot dog. So you notice they don't have to be in the first spot, okay? They just have to be listed before the others. Because when we're comparing hamburger and hot dog, really we're ignoring all these other options, okay? So you could do this too. You could go through and just eliminate all the barbecues and pizzas because we're not concerned with those. We're just looking at hamburgers and hot dogs. So here we'd say, okay, hamburger was chosen before hot dog. They get all three votes. Here, hamburgers before hot dog. They get all two votes. Okay, and that's how we're doing that in determining who gets the votes. Then when we add them all up, we look at who got the most overall. Here, hamburger did. So they win that pairwise comparison point. Okay. Now, this one we're kind of doing on our own, okay? These I wrote out for my class. These we could do together, okay? So we're looking here, hamburger versus barbecue. So hamburger beat barbecue. Hamburger beat barbecue. Hamburger beat barbecue. Hamburger beat barbecue. And then this last one, barbecue beat hamburger. Okay, so obviously hamburger's going to win there, right? Now down here, uh, we've got hot dog versus barbecue. So hot dog one here, uh, barbecue one here, hot dog beat barbecue here, hot dog one here, and barbecue one here. So we have four, and here we have 10, right? So this one won here. So hot dog got one point, and here hamburger got one point. Okay, so just looking at hamburger, hamburger won one, two, three pairs, right? Um, okay, so now that we have done all this, we are going to go back and actually count up all the points, okay? So we see that... Um, hamburger got um, one, two, three, right? Three pairs. So going back here, um, hamburger got three pairwise points. I think, um, oh, let me go back. I, I've already forgotten. Let's see how many hot dog and pizza got. Pizza here got zero. They didn't win any, right? Hot dog got two. They won this one and this one. And barbecue won one. Okay. 
So we go back here and we got three, two, one, zero. Now notice the pairwise point should add up to the number of pairs you had, right? So there's only six points to give out because there's only six pairs. And so uh, we had six. And so who would our winner be? Well, hamburger, right? So hamburger wins because they got the most um, pairwise points. So that is how we do pairwise comparison. And I think I'm going to go ahead and stop this lecture for now um, just on doing pairwise comparison. And I will start the next lecture um, on the border method. So if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll try to help you out with that. Thanks.